Hey, it's me, Garrett, and I just want to run through the basics of creating your own VR content, also known as 360 or immersive video. The first thing you need to understand is the format. There are a lot of ways of mapping panoramic views onto a two-dimensional plane. You can use a cube, fisheye hemispheres, or even the tiny planet spherical view. But forget all that shit for now because you mainly need to be concerned with the equal rectangular format. This is what you're going to be uploading when you want to share your content. The most common example of an equal rectangular view is the world map that we're used to seeing everywhere. The world map is essentially taking a globe and peeling it or unwrapping it and flattening that out. So in the same way, I could sketch something in 2D and then take that image, wrap it around a sphere, and our vantage point will be the center of the sphere looking outward. Does that make sense? Do me a favor, open up Photoshop and make a new canvas that's in a two by one ratio size. Something like 4,000 by 2,000 pixels. I'm just gonna draw a basic scene. It has a horizon, and I'm just gonna put some mountains in here. Maybe some clouds. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just wanna give you an example of how this works. Most of the scenery is gonna be near the horizon. Because if we were to conceptualize ourselves inside of a sphere, as we look out in every direction, most of what we see is gonna get mapped onto about a center third of this canvas. Now that we have our image, I'm just gonna to go to 3D, spherical panorama, new panorama layer from selected layers. Okay, now we're officially in VR. So just hit V to get your selection tool, and then you can click and drag to pan around. That's not bad, but as we look around, we can see that this image is pretty fucked up. Everything along our top seam got pinched, and so that's heavily distorted. I did that on purpose just to prove a point. We can't draw in that area because we can't take that distortion into account. So, in order to fix this, double click on spherical map. This brings us back to our original image, and now we can go back and forth through these two tabs. Now everything close to the horizon looks okay because it's not distorted by much. But everything close to the top and bottom is so distorted, I don't want to draw anything there. So I'm going to get rid of this cloud, and then I'm going to go back to the 360 view in my other tab. So we see the view has been updated, the cloud is gone, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw the cloud in this view. So I pan to get the right angle, and I hit B to get my brush, and then I just start drawing normally. Check this out, I go back to my other tab, and now I have that cloud drawing perfectly unwrapped in the Igor rectangular format, ready to use. Although this is difficult, it's entirely possible to draw entire scenes just by clicking and dragging in a 360 view and drawing little by little. Notice that you can change the field of view by dragging this virtual lens slider. A lower number is going to give you a wider angle lens, which is going to create more perspective distortion. Your average camera probably uses a 35 millimeter lens, something like that. But if we turn it up to 35, we see that this seriously constrains our viewable area. Now, this is a crucial point that took me a long time to wrap my head around. Whatever image we create in this equal rectangular format will not have perspective distortion. In other words, it's the platform or the software that interprets what we create. You can see in my original drawing here that all of the lines are perfectly straight, but when mapped onto a sphere, everything starts to bend. Depending on the field of view, that bending effect can be more pronounced. As a point of reference, if we upload this to YouTube, it will use about a 12 millimeter lens setting. And we don't have an option to change that. So depending on what platform we upload this to, our content could look completely different. Also using a headset versus viewing it in your browser is gonna change the experience of what you see in that field of view. The result could be that your immersive video is not that immersive. From what I've read, none of these formats really translate to the human eye. In terms of distances, the human eye is something like a 22 millimeter lens. But in terms of our field of view, it's much wider. Now consider that when you use a virtual headset, your peripheral vision is cut off, so you already get a sense of tunnel vision, but then the footage you're looking at is super wide. That's not very natural. 
And one hilarious example of this is in VR pornography, which I would never watch. I've never seen that stuff myself. But from what I've heard, it's kind of a weird experience because the actors who are far away appear small. But then if a woman puts her head close to the camera, the fact that I'm seeing this wide angle projection right outside of my headset makes it seem as though the woman's head is 20 feet long. And it's like, whoa, there's a 50 foot woman on top of me. I don't know if I'm into this. Maybe. But I don't I mean, that's what I heard. Anyway, so it's safe to say that there are some limitations here, but ignoring that for now, you understand the technical stuff that goes into this. So I'm thinking there are at least three different approaches to making your own content. The first option is to draw stuff in Photoshop like I just did. You can export your layers separately and animate them in Premiere. What most people are doing is the second option, just model everything in 3D. You can export an entire 3D animation to Equal Rectangular from your software. It's kind of a no-brainer, and that's what all these fucking virtual roller coaster videos are about. The third thing you could do is to just film in 360. But what I'm most interested in is a combination of the three techniques. I want to see video and 3D modeling being incorporated into traditional 2D animation that exists in that immersive space. And I haven't seen a lot of people doing that yet. At any rate, I've been going through these different approaches, and based on my experience, I'm going to put out a series of tutorials, and I'm going to try to keep these short and highly focused on each topic. And if there's something in this video that I didn't explain clearly, leave a comment. I think that feedback will help me develop some of the more experimental tutorials that I'm thinking about. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.